Welcome to this episode of Being Energy. We're gonna be checking out a 48 volt pure sine wave inverter that's rated for 1500 watts continuous 3000 watt surge. A few of the things that we're gonna to do today is see what does the sine wave look like? What does the voltage look like when it is idling and when it's under load? What kind of load can we put on it? We've got a, a one kilowatt heat gun. We've got a variable speed drill. We've got the end of an air conditioner there. Yeah, that's a little 5,000 BTU unit there. We've got our kilowatt meter to see what kind of wattage we're pulling with each of these devices and at different speeds. This here is our inverter, model number right there. I'll throw that down below. This was from Amazon. Yes, it's a Chinese inverter, but it seems like it performs pretty well. I'm gonna try and prove that today. Uh, what we've got running it is a pair of batteries from batteryhookup.com. These came out of a BMW car. I've got them set up in a 15S configuration so that they're about right for this 48 volt inverter. Um, they've got a BMS from Amazon running them. So I've got over, uh, over voltage protection, under voltage protection, um, over current protection, whatnot. I've got this uh, cutoff switch here in case anything bad happens. I need to shut everything off. This charge controller is only connected in the sense that the battery is connected to it and the inverter is connected to it. I don't have any solar connected in here. You can see that here, we got zero PV coming in. And our battery is at 54.6 volts. Low voltage cutoff for the inverter, I think is 45 volts. High voltage is 61 volts. So we've got plenty of capacity to work with. This is like a 3.8 kilowatt hour battery. So first of all, I wanna see how much load can this guy handle? All right, so we've got ourselves a kilowatt running to our power strip over here. We've got our AC started, so we're right out here about 60 watts. And then we're gonna wait for our compressor to kick on. While we're waiting for our compressor to kick on, we can look over at our scope. So we're at 118.4 volts AC, and this is what our pure sine wave looks like, which certainly looks beautiful. Don't see any problems with that. Now let's try throwing some varied loads on that and see what the sine wave does. So I have plugged in my drill. Oh, there's the compressor. Really compressed that uh, sine wave, huh? That was my bad connections. Hold on. Bear with me here. Okay. So we're at 116 volts, go to the scope, auto set, back to our 100 volt range, which means it should be going about 60 volts up, 60 volts down, 60 volts up, etc. So we are at 364 watts on our kilowatt. So let's put some varied load on here and see what happens. doesn't really seem to care. How about the heat gun? So that's on low. Let's go to high. So there we are at almost 1400 watts. Sine wave still looks steady. So we need to add a few more watts and see if we can overload this guy. Seems to be handling it well. Let's see if I can grab another resistive load that'll push us over that 1600 limit here. All right, so we're sitting here with our air conditioner running. We've got our Dyson fan running. We're going to power on our heat gun. So that gets us to 1455. And then see if we can top that off with a soldering iron. 1540, we need something more, something more. All right, so just to show you guys, we do have running fans on here. They just kicked on. I'm thankful the, the, the heat sink really doesn't get all that hot before the fans kick in. It does not get, it's just warm, really. Um, so it seems to have a fairly reactive temperature control. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and run a fairly heavy load. So the fans have already kicked back off on the inverter. The AC compressor should kick back on here in a second. 
the blower fan is running. And I just wanna run this for a little bit and see. Oh, I'm curious if the, the inverter fans will cycle with it up at 1400, 1500 watts. Um, but even if not cycling, does it continue to provide power or will it overheat at under 1500 watts? We've already seen that it'll hit 1600 watts before it conks out. So that could be partly its surge capacity. So maybe 1600 watts for a couple of minutes or a 30 seconds uh, overcomes that 3000 watt surge, whatever capacitors or whatever they've got to provide that surge capacity. I'm curious if it can do 14 or 1500 watts sustained. That's what we're gonna find out now. So that was a good test too. We were already at 1100 watts and the AC was able to kick on. So the compressor's on. The fans for the inverter have kicked on, so we're at 1400 watts now. So let's run like this for a little while and see what happens. We can see that our sine wave is still steady. So at 1400 watts, the inverter fans kicked on and cycled back off. So that tells me there's not a whole lot of heat being lost in there. The case is still just warm to the touch. This is looking good, because I don't think we're gonna hit, okay, it's, it's, it's warm to the touch on one side. The other side is probably up in the 98, 110 degree range. Um, I do have it mounted horizontal. It would probably be a little better if you mounted it with the fans pointed up so that heat could naturally flow out of it and across the fins. It is more or less in an open space right now though, not in an enclosed space. Let's see what we're at for voltage. So we're 113.2 volts. So the inverter kit fans have kicked back on again. All right, so I was worried about that. <clears throat> Um, I really shouldn't, but I've got a 50 foot extension cord here running to my kilowatt and you'll see that probing the voltage right at the inverter, I'm getting 117.3 and down at the kilowatt, I'm getting 113. So I'm getting quite a bit of voltage drop on this 50 foot cord. So we'll have to keep that in mind. That is perfectly within range. Um, if we look at a 6% plus or minus on 120, this, you know, 114 would be the low end. And we're at 1400 watts. So this is good. So I don't know what happened there. The inverter did not beep, but I lost power to the kilowatt. I wonder if my kilowatt lost it. It's actually quite warm. So I'm still getting 119 volts on the back of the inverter. Let's see what I'm getting here. 119 volts there. Maybe, all right, let's plug this in. Okay, there we go. Um, so I lost my kilowatt. Admittedly, it had some damage from a previous test. And it is rated for 15 amps. At 1700 watts, so I wasn't overloading it, but it does appear that I killed it. Well, that kind of throws our test off a little bit. Anyway, this seems like a pretty fair test. We ran it for, what, five, 10 minutes. Inverter was cycling on and off multiple times, which means it was not overheating. It was able to cool itself down, shut off the fans, and then let it warm back up. So I am happy with that. Let's see what else. We've looked at the sine wave. The sine wave looks very stable, whether it's at idle or under load. It does not overheat and shut off. Um, let's look at the voltage when we're idling. Uh, actually, we saw that it was 119 volts. Go back to the meter here. Let's go ahead and unplug the AC. So we're at 119. Let me go straight to the inverter here. It really shouldn't matter since there's no load on this cable anyway. Yeah, so we're putting out 119 volts from the inverter with no load. If this was a scratch and sniff video, you could smell this. It has let out the magic smoke. I didn't notice that at first, but it definitely has. Anyway, um, kilowatt bites the dust. I've had that for a few years. I need to get one that can handle higher amperage um, as we get into higher inverters and more fun with this stuff. So check out this inverter. It was about 300 bucks when I bought it off of Amazon. It certainly seems to be worth its money. 
Um, it doesn't come with cables, but you got some nice little bolt downs for your cables. What I love about the 48 volt inverter um, is that you don't need heavy gauge cables to run this. This is uh, 1500 watts and 48 volts. That's like 30 amps. Um, so some like 10 gauge wire or, or 14 gauge wire even could run this. I mean, of course that depends on how far you're running to your battery, but a lot of these setups, you've got your charge controller, your battery, your inverter, all very close to each other. And that seems like a great place to put this. Keep your, keep your runs short and your wire can be smaller. Or, you know, if you really wanna go with big wire, that's fine. Just fuse it according to what you need. There we have it, people. One 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter that works as advertised and more. Could run more than 1500 watts, can start a 5000 BTU air conditioner. I've actually started my 8000 BTU air conditioner on it. I've run both the five and the 8,000. You just have to start them in a specific order. Got to start the eight, then the five. Um, this 5,000 BTU though that I've got has a soft start, much softer than the old 8,000 that I've got. So it's very possible that a newer air conditioner with more modern technology will start on this, even if it's a larger air conditioner. The uh, fan cycles on and off. It, it doesn't just run full blast all the time. I really like that. So if you've got this inverter sitting around, it's not, drawing a whole lot of amps. This thing pulls about 15 watts at idle, I believe is what I measured it at when you've got the inverter on and nothing running to it. Um, paired with my 3.8 kilowatt hour battery, I could run my 5000 BTU air conditioner all day long on solar and then about seven hours if it's running full blast after that. If I've got it set to a reasonable temperature and it's cycling on and off, it'll go all night long. Um, like right now I've got 53.6 volts left in this battery so I've probably still got it to a two, two and a half hours of uh, maybe more of running that air conditioner. I might not run that tonight but it is a lot of fun playing with this stuff. If you're interested in seeing more of it, I've got a 12 volt system that I'm going to be showing off here in a bit. Then hit that like and subscribe and I will see you soon.